How's it guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would rank all of the Madonna albums that have ever been released. 15 studio albums I'm going to be covering on this list and at number 15, probably no surprise, is MDNA. Uh, this one was released in 2012 and I, I'm just gonna say I do not like this album. I very rarely listen to it and if I do I only listen to it because of Masterpiece. There are some nice moments throughout the song, Girl Gone Wild, Turn Up The Radio and Nicki Minaj's tracks that she does are, are quite good as well um, but Masterpiece is sort of the only redeeming song from that album so that's why it is at number 15. Next up is Madonna's Hard Candy released in 2008. Even though this has one of the most famous Madonna songs of all time with four minutes I find that the rest of the album is not as enjoyable as some of the other Madonna songs that I do find a, a lot more songs like Miles Away, A Give In To Me, a Candy Shop, they have a good sound to them but over a while that sort of Pharrell production just gets a bit repetitive and a bit exhausting and by the end of it you, you just want something different um, but I like those those songs. Next up I have the album Music released in 2000. Again this has one of the most famous Madonna songs especially from the late years in her career with music. It's a really great song and I really like what it feels like for a girl as well. I think they're both really fantastic songs but then the rest of the album I couldn't even tell you any of her songs from the album. Um, I just find it very forgettable, um, although I do really like those two songs a lot. Next up we had I'm Breathless, Breathless released in 1990. This is the soundtrack to the film Dick Tracy, but it does have the most famous Madonna song with Vogue, probably the most famous Madonna song I want to say. Um, I do really enjoy this album, I really like Back in Business, Sooner or Later, More, and of course Vogue. Um, I just think stacked up against obviously her other albums it is just gonna rank here. Um, I feel like Vogue needed to have its own sort of pop album to fit more in with that song. It seemed like she had the soundtrack and then just added that song onto the soundtrack um, for no real reason. Um, so I feel like it, it, it should have sort of deserved its own pop album on its own called Vogue, but um, but I, I, I do really like the album still. Next up is the 2003 release American Life. American Life critically is not one of Madonna's most um, popular um, by the critics. It has a, a, a different sound to it, which I don't think a lot of people um, like as much as that other stuff. Um, however, I do really like songs like American Life, Hollywood, um, Ecstatic Process, Nobody Knows Me. I think there's some really great songs in here, but I think they're just lost from the from the initial exterior you, you sort of listen to from the album. Um, and because it is so different um, to Madonna's other work and it is probably more politically controversial, people are just sort of put off by it and they don't give it a chance as much as they should. Um, but yeah, I do really like this one. And Die Another Day is another great song that was the James Bond soundtrack as well. Next up, we have the 1992 release Erotica. Erotica was a real change of pace for Madonna and definitely one of the biggest reinventions. The first sort of stages of her career, she had been this sort of pop icon and now she sort of slipped into the R&B, um, sort of slowed it down a bit, um, but completely changed her lyrical content with a lot more um, intense sort of referencing to sex and things like this and sexuality um, and all these fantastic things that are obviously back then really stirred the pot whereas now you just hear it every day on the radio may not even realize it um, and Orozco received a lot of backlash um, and a lot of controversy um, but I think it's great I really like the title track. I like Thief of Hearts, Rain and uh, Deeper and Deeper are all really fantastic songs and I think that the backlash that she received really um, made her fight back in like her other songs like in Bedtime Stories she she goes into it more um, and I just think it's, it's a really good album. Next up we have uh, the 2019 release Madame X. Um, I really enjoyed Madame X. Um, I didn't want to rank it too high because I feel like I'm just gonna rank higher just because it's new um, it's be interesting to see how this one ages. I think Rebel Heart has aged really nicely. Um, it's still really good music um, where sometimes she releases an album, it's great at first, then you just completely forget about it, like MDNA, Hard Candy. Um, but I think Madame X is, is a really good album and I think it's very well-rounded. I've mentioned it loads in my, in my recent interview, interview, in my recent review. Uh, so if you want me to talk more about it, just go and watch that video, but I still think it's a great album. Next up, I know everyone's going to hate me for this, but next up is Confessions, uh, released in 2005. I just, it doesn't do much for me as much as her other albums. 
I think there are some fantastic songs in it, but as an album, it's just not one that I go back and listen to. And that's just my opinion. It's just not one I, I, I listen to as much. I would have ranked it much higher on the list, um, but I can appreciate and see when a good pop album is made. And I, I, I can see that it's a, it's a good pop album. It's just not my taste in regards to Madonna's music. Um, but obviously Hung Up is a fantastic song. I love Get Together. It just, it, I Love New York is just one of the worst songs ever made. And it's just, it's just bad. And it, it, for me, it just puts a bad taste in my mouth. When I think of the album, don't hate me. Um, <laughs> I still think it's a, a really good album. And it's, that's, that's where I'm ranking it. Halfway, I think is fair for me. Next up, we have the 1984 release Like a Virgin. This is Madonna's second studio album um, with the help from Nile Rodgers producing it. It was a fantastic way to sort of boost her career. And I think it really is the one that propelled her into the stardom and into the fame. I think it's a really well-rounded album. Fantastic songs on there. Like a Virgin, Angel, um, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, This Used To Be My Playground. So many great songs. Um, and what's another one I like? Get Into The Groove, Material Girl. It, it, it's just one of those albums um, that just, so many songs are great hits. So that's why it is ranking there. Next up, we have the 2015 release of Rebel Heart. Rebel Heart was a, a special one for me because it was the first album that I uh, remember anticipating as a Madonna fan. Um, all of her other stuff had just been released before. So this was one I could really get excited for and I did and it was fantastic when it dropped. There are so many fantastic tracks and singles from the album and it just really showed that Madonna was not slowing down and that she still has a lot to say and a lot to give. Um, Ghost Town, Living for Love, Wash All Over Me, Joan of Arc, the title track Rebel Heart, all really, really fantastic tracks. And it's a really, really good listen, even in Madonna's later career. Next up, we have one of my personal favorites, maybe one of the most underrated Madonna albums, in my opinion, is the 1994 Bedtime Stories. Bedtime Stories was almost a response to the backlash she got from Erotica, especially in the song Human Nature. Human Nature is one of my all-time favorite Madonna songs. It's her not holding back, it's her responding, um, saying, did I say something wrong? Oops, I didn't know I can talk about sex. It's just fantastic, and I think that the whole album is fantastic. Take a bow. Um, Bjork co-wrote, um, or just wrote, uh, which one was it? Bedtime Story, the title track, which is so psychedelic and weird um, and very Bjork. So I really, really like that. I love Secrets. It's just a really, really good album. Next up, we have Madonna's um, first solo album, self-titled Madonna, released in 1983. It's a very classic 80s pop album. Really memorable and nostalgic songs, Lucky Star, Borderline, I Know It, Think Of Me. All of the tracks on here are really fun songs and I think they are a clear staple of, of Madonna's early career and how her career was gonna go. It was really setting herself up and that she was really one to look out for. Number three is the 1986 True Blue. True Blue is another one that with just every song with the exception of two tracks uh, are just massive hit. Jimmy Jimmy and Love Make the World Go Round could have been left out or could have just been like extra songs, but they didn't really do much for me. Papa Don't Preach, Open Your Heart, White Heat, Live to Tell. Um, so many great songs on this album, very iconic. The artwork is very staple Madonna. Um, and I just think it's a really fantastic album. Without those songs, it could even be my number one pick. But yeah, but it's just a really well-rounded, um, fantastic album. Next up, we have the 1998 album, Ray of Light. Uh, Ray of Light is a really special album. It's, it's completely different to anything Madonna has ever produced and mm, put out into the world. Um, it's a really fantastic album, very different, very unique. Her vocals are incredible on this album. The lyrical content of the album is completely different. Very deep meanings with Frozen, Power of Goodbye, um, so many, Candy Perfume Girl, Ray of Light itself. It's really, really good songs on this album and that I think is one that everyone has to listen to at some point. It's just so, so good. And at number one, it's no secret that this could be one of the greatest albums of all time is 1989's Like a Prayer. Like a Prayer really just propelled Madonna into the fame that she was always destined to have. Every song is fantastic on this record. I really could fight the case for all of them. Like a Prayer, Express Yourself, Love Song featuring Prince is a really nice underrated song. Oh Father, Promise to Try, 
I just, I, I think it's Root Dear Jesse. that is just such a good album. And I think that it, it's one of those albums that's gonna go down in history. It's probably one of the greatest pop albums of all time. And it is an album that has inspired so many different people um, and, and artists in, that we are seeing in the charts now. Um, and I think it's the best Madonna album, period. Okay, that is this video all wrapped up. Let me know in the comments your Madonna album's rank would be very interesting to know. I know Confessions is gonna get me some hate, just I'm sorry. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye. Yeah!